Jason's come to the capital Hobart to find out more about Eileen's father, Simeon, with the help of archivist Caroline Horner. What do I do here, basically? How about you start with a basic search? Yeah. Just pop his name in there. Okay. Nothing coming up there. Nothing's coming up? No. no. Okay. I might try something else. Try the Tasmanian Convict Index. Okay, here we go. I knew, I knew there'd be a... Try it, try it. Um... If you're interested in Simeon, yeah. perhaps have a look and see... Um, their give... father, their father, Joseph Lyons. Yeah. Okay. I'd give him a try. Surname Lyons, give a name Joseph. Joseph Lyons. <laughs> Wow. Convict number 44009. <coughs> Everybody told me that I, I'd have a convict past for sure. Um, or English people <laughs> primarily will always turn around to me and say, um, you're all a bunch of convicts. And they're right. Yeah, yeah. but here's the proof. It's yeah. the proof. Mm -hmm. Voyage number 194, departure date July 21st, 1842. In 1842, when Joseph Lyons arrived in Tasmania, transportation to Australia was at its peak. 150,000 convicts had already been transported to the penal colony since it was first claimed for the British Empire by Captain James Cook at Botany Bay 72 years earlier in 1770. A penal colony was a settlement used to exile prisoners from their homeland but it also served an economic purpose. The British had been transporting convicts to its colonies in America and elsewhere as a form of slave labor for plantation owners since the early 17th century. The remoteness of Australia and its abundance of natural resources made it an ideal destination for transportation. By the time Joseph Lyons arrived, Australia had become the largest penal colony in the entire empire. Jason wants to find out the circumstances surrounding Joseph's conviction and has asked to examine his convict records. So if you just look up here. So this, this was done in, in the UK or here? No, this was done, done here. here. Right, CC Courts, August 1841. So that's the Central Criminal Court. Right, okay. <laughs> It's probably better known as the Old Bailey, right? In London. Okay. So that's just showing. So th this was this was his his trial in London. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He's got a ten year conviction. That's right. Yeah. Um, and then you've got what looks like Jew. That's right. Yes. Right. Yes. So so oh. Joseph Lyons was Jewish. Right. And then here, can you read that? Okay. Uh, can read, can read and can write. That's right. Wow, yeah, yeah. wow. amazing. So, so he was literate. Right, um, right. Many of the convicts weren't. weren't. No, so right. so that would have been an advantage for him to have those skills. Wow. And what else here? So you've got here what looks like wife, <laughs> um, Rosetta, and then what's that? Is that an S? That's an S. So it could be um, could be sister, mm -hmm. but um, it could also be son. Right. So it's a little hard to read. Son. What's, what's that? Chapel. Yeah, so you've got the native place, mm -hmm. Whitechapel. Whitechapel. Which you would be familiar with in London. Yeah, East London. And I think that says Middlesex Street. Right. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, so it's quite detailed telling you right. where, where they lived, where the family is still living. Yeah. In 1841, Middlesex Street, better known as Petticoat Lane, was at the heart of London's impoverished Jewish community. Like many Jews, Joseph and Rosetta Lyons worked as dealers, a generic term for small-time scrap metal and junk merchants. They operated from a one-room shop on the ground floor of their home, but their world was turned upside down when in August 1841, Joseph was arrested. To find out what Joseph's crime was, Jason is looking up the official court record of his trial at the Old Bailey. Joseph Lyons and Rosetta Lyons were indicted for feloniously receiving of a certain evil disposed person. On the 3rd of August, three pounds, weight of brass, value 
1S6D. Yeah, so you've got one shilling six pence. Right. The goods of John Warner and others, well knowing it to have been stolen. So what is the value of that in today's terms? You're looking at about three pounds in today's terms. Right. Both of them. Was that right? Yes. Say both of them were. Yeah. Were involved in it. They were. Yeah, husband and wife. Really. Mm -hmm. So I wonder where she. Yes. Went. <laughs> Indeed. Um, Joseph Lyons guilty, age 33, mm -hmm. transported for 10 years. Rosetta Lyons not guilty. Um, there were two other indictments against the prisoner, upon which no evidence was offered against the female prisoner. Right, so that might explain why he was found guilty and she wasn't. Right. Officially, the rationale for transportation was the problem of overcrowded prisons in England. In reality, the need for free labour to help build the new colony was even more significant. Consequently, the smallest misdemeanor could earn you years of hard labour on a road gang. Joseph was sent to Australia for 10 years, but then you have Simeon, his son, that was born here. Now, I don't think Rosetta was on the boat because she was acquitted. So it's interesting to see how Simeon sort of fits into the picture. 